Hi guys and welcome to another video, The Little Ucho. Sorry about last week guys, I was sick as a dog. I was in bed most of the week, so I didn't make any videos and uh, hopefully I'll catch up. There was two reasons why I didn't make a video last week and why this week's video is a bit upside down. Is I was sick, like I told, like I told you, and uh, I've got a very serious flu. I think I'm over most of it and uh, we'll get back to woodwork again. The second reason is a very, very good friend of mine, old Bucks, passed away. And uh, we really miss our friend. His son Ari asked me if I would make two little wooden boxes for Bucks, which I've made and I'll show you in the end of the video what it looks like. I didn't record much of it because of the two reasons I just told you. And uh, hopefully next week we'll be back to normal videos. This is a short video and it's a bit upside down. Sorry about that guys. But please bear with me. So guys please share and subscribe. Let's make this channel a great one. So guys we've got two frames to make again for a customer. They got totally rotten and the glass is falling out. These windows are hanging from the hinges on that side so they open bottom to top and what happened is the bottoms got rotten and this is falling out now. So we're going to remake them. As you can see it's supposed to be nice little cleats that's supposed to be in there. But over the years they replaced this one for example with a square piece of wood. The bottom here they just put window putty in. That one just as bad, big quarter around in there. And lots of window putty everywhere. So they're very rotten. I'm going to do bridle joints on all four corners. And then the dimensions of the wood is 30 by 35. And I'm going to cut it out of the stock that I had delivered from my wood supplier. Maranti now ridiculously expensive. The Maranti is now 33,000 rand a cubic meter, which is worse than Kiat at the moment. I could have built this from Kiat much cheaper. The glass in this, the previous windows we've done was safety glass. These two, I suppose it's because on the second story of the house is not safety glass, it's normal standard glass. And uh, we'll have to be very careful when we disassemble this. So let me start this assembling quickly and I'll show you what we're going to do here.
so guys just to show you there yeah, i've got another video on my channel where you can see how i made the channel from start to end this is the old window frame that was by my customer and this is the inside of the frame so it doesn't look so bad all the joints came loose it's all broken and loose and apart so what i've done is i took my ranty again which is ridiculously expensive at the moment made bridle joints put a hardwood dowel through and glued of course all four corners with exterior rated glue I refitted the hardware, the hinges on top and then the clasp on the bottom. But what I want to show you is actually the outside of this. Now South Africa's weather is not very suited for wood framing, especially if you're a bit lazy and you don't feel like redoing it every now and then, sanding and oiling, then this is what happens. It's as dry as a bone. It is cracked. It is. We won't be able to save this old frame. And that's why I made the new one. I'm not going to use window putty to put the glass back. The window putty doesn't really adhere to the wood. Because the wood, I suppose, moves a little bit. Not much in this dimensions. The sizes are very small. But there's definitely movement. And then of course the sun doesn't help much either. You can see that absolutely nowhere that the window putty actually adhered. There's actually two little pieces that the window putty adhered and here's a little piece. But everywhere else the putty has come out very very easy. So I'm doing silicon, a marine silicon that is also rated for exterior use and I'm just gluing the glass to the one side of the frame this is the inside that's the outside so I'm just putting a bead of silicone right around put the glass down and then the new quarter rounds that I'm putting on here that I've made I just nail them no glue nothing so that if the glass breaks they can remove it and replace the glass. Now the customer will do the varnishing himself and I suppose he will polish these and clean them up. My job was just, I just needed to make the frame. Something else that I want to show you that I learned with these window frames. This is the bottom, that's the hinge part and it closes like this. So what I've done is because wood movement and everything, I hope you can see that. I've cut a very slight chamfer on the bottom where it closes towards. Just to help a little bit once this wood starts swelling and getting wet in the rain and it's not maybe sealed properly. But that helps quite a lot. So let me fit the glass. Then this is done. Hi guys, welcome to a very sad little wood shop. The wood you see in front of us here, it's pear wood and maple. And what we're doing is we're making a rectangular little inn for a very, very good friend of mine that passed away. So the plan is what we're doing is we're making a box. Kunrat, my friend, has drawn us a basic plan. We're making it 300 long, 200 deep and 150 millimeters high. The top we're going to make from pear wood and the box itself from um, maple. And then we're going to let the top hang over 5 millimeters right around and give it a little chamfer. We're then going to put little inserts on the corners out of a dark wood like in Boya. And then also on the bottom we're going to give it a little accent piece that's also in Boya. The bottom is going to be removable. And uh, we've got the parts to size and we've got to mitre all the corners now. We'll show you in a second what that's going to look like. So like you have seen guys on the mitre saw, so we mitered all the corners. 
Now just using the strap clamp, just gluing it up, clean joints, and then once it's, it's dry, we're going to put the splines on the corners. The mitres came out quite nicely, and then Kunrad also started trimming the two tops to a final size. My jig for cutting the splines is ready, so we're just waiting for the glue to dry.